Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another video and today we're going to be talking about some upcoming Gunpla. So this right here is the irregular, regular spot on the channel called the Iron Diaper where I talk about Gundam news and we got a whole bunch of awesome Gunpla news, of course, at the All Japan Hobby Show. So that did happen last week, so this is a little bit on the late side, so you might know all this already, but this stuff is worth talking about, especially this guy right here. Divided opinions all around, me included. Internally divided. But as well as that, there was a bunch of other stuff announced which was cool and odd. For example, we're going to be getting some plastic model kits of a PlayStation, which costs the exact same price as an actual functioning pre-owned PlayStation. That doesn't make much sense. As well as that, we got some 30-minute missions announcements. If you haven't seen any of my reviews on those, I can tell you I love those kits. So simple, so awesome, and simple and awesome, what can I say? The new kits make them look even better, even more awesome, and definitely something you need to check out if you haven't given them a go yet. I highly, highly recommend them. But anyway, let's move right into the Gunpla. And I'm gonna start with this guy right here. So, this right here, in case you don't know what it is, and even if you do know what it is, this is the G40 version of the high-grade granddaddy. That's the Oryx 78 II. So this new kind of reimagining of it for the 40th anniversary of Gundam, or is it for the 40th anniversary of Gunpla? I'm not sure, because... Over here on the actual Bandai Hobby Site website, and at this point I will mention that all the pictures I'm using in this video are either from Bandai's own website, that's the Hobby Site, or over on Dengeki Hobby. If you're looking for news about Gunpla, otaku stuff, figures, etc, Dengeki Hobby is the best place to go. Sure it is in Japanese, but you'll get all your news early and their pictures are fantastic. But anyway, this is the G40 industrial design version of the RX-78 Gundam. Or XMT2, I should say. So up here in the top, you can see they're kind of stretching out the 40th anniversary of Gundam. So this year, 2019, was the 40th anniversary of Gundam itself. And next year, 2020, is the 40th anniversary of Gunpla. As you and I know it, Gundam plastic models. So this kind of falls in between the two. This is coming out in December of this year. And speaking of which, this is going to cost a whopping 3,300 yen. That is three times the price of the high-grade Granddaddy Gundam Revive, which came out for the 35th anniversary, I think. I'll pop a picture of that up right now so you can check that one out. So that has a more standard kind of look, a little sleeker than the traditional design. But yeah, this one coming up, this industrial design version, which has a lot of interesting aspects about it, once again dividing opinion, is 3,300 yen. So the first pictures I saw of this were online. So they were on, I think, Bandai Hobby Sites Twitter, and they weren't the best pictures, and it looked pretty much like this, you, what you're, I put up on the screen right now. It looked absolutely horrendous. So when they actually got some decent pictures, like the ones here off Dengeki Hobby, it doesn't look so bad, it's actually quite nice. It pulls off that pose so nicely, but in that prone standing pose, it does look a little bit odd. Once I said, dividing opinions, and... We'll talk about that a little bit more in a bit. But first, let's jump back to the Bandai Hobby site. There's a lot going on for this. Bandai are really pushing this right here. So we've got the Road to G40. This thing's coming out in a couple of months. This is coming out in December. So they already have this uh, Road to G40. One, two, and three. Number one right here is available. It is a interview with the guy who designed this Gundam. That, of course, is... Kyo Yuki Okuyama, or as he's known usually, Ken Okuyama. He is an industrial designer, did a lot of designs on cars like the Ferrari Enzo, as well as a bunch with his own company, I think. They're definitely kind of like this Gundam, something that I would say would divide opinion quite a bit. But anyway, that's all in Japanese, yada yada yada. But for me, the coolest thing about this design, that is this one right here. Well, the coolest aspect about this design to me is not even this design, it's the fact that he did not just design a Gundam, he also designed... This right here is Shars Zaku as well as a standard Zaku. So the one thing that stands out to me straight away about these is they're fairly standard design. More than likely they will feature the cool engineering that's on the G40 Gundam, which I'll talk about in a second. But these are symmetrical. So this thing has got two of those Zaku shields and the Shars Zaku has two of those big spiky kind of pauldron shoulder kind of things. I think that's pretty cool. And speaking of the cool design of this thing, flying back to the Bandai Hobby site, once again, this is coming out in December of this year, 3,300 yen, we've got some images of this. First off, it definitely looks a little bit on the funny side while standing there. It's almost like he designed this just to do this pose right here. Just to do this 
There it is from the back again, fantastic looking. But it seems like a little weird looking here, awesome looking here. Once again, it seemed like it was designed with articulation in mind. So standing there in that kind of almost prone standing position doesn't look so hot. But just look at this insane articulation. First off, it's a little bit odd that the front skirting armor does not move, so it's got a bit of an extra reverse knee right here. Once again, that's cool, and again, dividing opinions. But a lot of it is really cool. One kind of issue some people have with it is that the inner frame or the joint sections is all white. That is a very classic design. It's just like it was in the original anime, like you can see right here. So that does mean it is somewhat anime accurate. There's absolutely no denying that this thing is going to be an absolute posing god. And it seems to feature a very simple yet efficient effective waist joint here, so I can't wait to actually get this in hand and see what it can do, but like I mentioned, this has divided a lot of opinions, so let's read some out. So flying over to reddit onto r slash gompla, and on this particular post about it, we're gonna read some comments, see what people think. And the first top comment here says, you know those frames where the RX-78 looked a bit off in the anime? And what he's talking about is this right here. And I totally see what this guy is saying. This is exactly what I thought the first time I saw that really wonky, out of focus kind of phone camera kind of picture that I saw first on Twitter. And this is what I thought of. Second guy here in the uh, don't like it category saying, looking at this, I finally realized what I don't like about this design. Despite all of its angles, it looks so soft, chubby and rounded. And once again, I do agree with that. The torso is looking a bit on the uh, balloony kind of side. Very soft. Next one here, if this is the big G40 item, count me in the sorely disappointed camp. That's three not loving it. Fourth person not liking it, I feel like I'm looking at the Pillsbury Doughboy as a gunpla kit. Next one, I'm not sure if this is a not like or just a general shock, but it says, correct me if I'm wrong, but did that page say 3,000 yen? That is definitely a hard pill to swallow for a high grade kit that's normal sized with not that much stuff. Someone else not impressed here. This is so underwhelming. But there is some people who do like it. This guy right here, Mr. Tilling, or Tilling, says it looks weird with round parts. I like it. But on another post on or slash Gumpla, it seems to be a bit more on the positive side. This guy says, looks good. Next one saying, if this is the LA movie design, I'd be happy. Mm, I don't know if I would. And there's another guy called Ross saying he likes it too, so... It is very divided. We're gonna jump on over to the website Gundam Kits Collection. So once again, I will throw the URL down there in the description as well as Dengeki Hobby if you wanna check these websites out if you don't already, but you probably already do. And let's see what we've got on here. First guy, joint work is great. Other than that pure garbage, I can't tell if that's a like or dislike. 3,300 yen for a high grade of this size. Again, shock at the price. It looks like it was inflated like a balloon. Interesting joint. Feed articulation is very spicy. Revive is way better. And I like this new design. Once again, completely divide it. And the comment that I agree with the most here on Gundam Kits Collection is, is this comment here by Cruzzy saying, honestly, I kind of prefer an oddity over recycling old designs with slight variations. And I do agree. What else could they really do with an RX-78 2 at this point that they haven't done before? If the revive is a perfect high grade, how can you improve on that without changing things? I think it looks interesting and I'm looking forward to trying it out. But anyway, Onto some more new kits. So now back to Dengeki Hobby and what we've got right here is this. This is a new Verka kit, but the odd thing is this is coming out in February. Usually within a year, in December, we get either a Verka or a Perfect Grade as the biggest release of the year, but it seems like that kit we just looked at, that high grade G40, is taking the December spot. So this is coming out in February, and so is the newest perfect grade. At least that's what it seems like right now, but anyway, this right here is the master grade Faz Verka, and this looks insane. Look at the size of that gun. So with this, of course, we get that massive hyper mega cannon, which looks insane. I'm not sure about this little segment right here. This looks very similar to that dodgy little piece that we got on the master grade heavy arms that attaches the minigun to the backpack. I've always had a bit of issues with that popping out all the time or falling apart. So hopefully they've re-engineered that a little bit, but all in all, out of everything I've seen from this show, this is the thing I'm looking forward to the most. This looks intense. Also, we've got those nice swappable fingers on there. So that means it should be compatible with all the recent gyms we saw. I like this. This keeping all the Fetty suits with similar parts that are, are compatible with each other definitely is awesome. Also, before I forget, this will cost about 11,000 yen. Once again, coming out in February. We also got some more high-grade re-rise announcements, including this right here. So this is yet unnamed, but seeing as we've got Earth 3, Mars 4, V2, that wasn't even in order, 
I guess you could try and throw a guess on what this could be called. So it could be like Mer 1, Jupe 5, something like that. This one's out in January, 2000 yen around. Expensive enough. But again, we do have a bunch of nice effect parts in there. And so far, I'm digging the white on this. Not so bad. We do have another yet unnamed one. This looks like an aquatic form. So again, probably going with a planet and a number for the naming system. So this could be Jupe 5. Sat 6. I'm not sure. What do you think? Drop it in the comments. As for the little tag that was with this, this does say it's coming out in February as well, but this just seems to be the unit itself at 850, so it could just be the separate unit. Who knows? Also announced is some SD cross silhouettes. That's definitely a silhouette frame I see in there. So here we've got Earth 3. We've also got another weapon kit announced, but that weapon right there looks similar to the one we saw on that blue aquatic form. Could be the same. Looks like some kind of harpoon. Next up then, and we don't have full release photos for this yet, so once again, these photos are from Dengeki Hobby, and that is the Perfect Grade, or should I say, Premium Bandai Perfect Grade Perfect Strike Gundam. So, this comes in two different formats, that is the entirety of the Perfect Strike Gundam, that will set you back about 25,000 yen, and that is everything, that's the sword, the launcher, all the parts to make into the perfect strike, as well as some kind of outer cosmetic changes to the armor. We do have some extra armor bits there in the front skirting, up on the chest, etc. Probably a lot more than I'm even noticing that do make this look a little bit different. But I think internally this is exactly the same as what we would have seen before. This is a very solid perfect grade. I do have one. Quite awesome. But I don't know how it's going to deal with all that stuff. But I'm looking forward to finding out. And once again, this comes out in February, and that's how much it costs. 25,000 yen for the full perfect grade and the striker pack. And the striker stuff. The sword, launcher, etc. On to the next one. Next up then, and this sadly is only a premium bandai release so far, and this is the real grade Unicorn Phoenix. And of course, that is with the gold coating. So I have reviewed both versions of the gold coating high grade Phoenix, neither of which are particularly great. You should know by now, high grade unicorn is not really worth your time, but the real grade, on the other hand, most certainly is. Once again, there is no full release photos of this kit just yet, so this is from Dengeki Hobby. The release date has not been announced yet, but this is quite pricey at 11,600 yen. This will cost more than the Faz. Or should I say Fats? Some more premium Bandai. Once again, no full release photos. So this is from Dengeki Hobby. And we are getting a unicorn version of the Sinanju Stein as a high grade. The high grade Sinanju Stein, the one from Narrative, is absolutely fantastic. Besides the fact that you either need to use stickers on the sleeves, iconography, or paint them. But that is not an issue on this, the original Stein, which is still my favorite version of Sinanju to this day. I do prefer the full frontal red version, but I still don't feel there is a perfect kit of that just yet. However, this right here should be awesome. Once again, this has no release date just yet and will cost around 2,600 yen. That's before middlemen though. It seems that Bandai is taking the 1.5 elements that it added into the Rigazi Custom. That's the one with the AK-47, the giant AK-47 for shooting in space. But they took the 1.5 elements that they improved on the original version and now have made this right here and called it the Regazi Unicorn version. As far as I remember, the Regazi in Unicorn didn't do anything but stand in the background. Either way, no announcement yet and it costs about 5,300 yen once again with no middlemen. Another P Bandai announcement, and it's another advance of Zeta High Grade. This one right here is off the charts awesome, and this is the Gundam TR6. Hold on while I pull up the nameplate so I can get this right. Heisen Slay 2 Ra. So once again, this has no release date yet and comes in at a spicy 5,900 yen, but this looks like it's gonna be fairly big. All in all, looking awesome though. So finally, out of all the stuff I've been looking at in the last while, this is the only kit that actually has a page over on the Bandai Hobby site. So of course, this is the Master Grade Blast Impulse Gundam. This has been a long time coming and... Will it? Won't it? Yep, been blocked by Bandai again because I'm not in Japan. Anyway, flying over once again to Gundam Kits Collection, we do have the actual Bandai pictures of this particular kit. And all I can say is this looks pretty cool. Of course, this is the third version of the... Impulse Gundam, we've got the Force Impulse, which has been out for a few years now. We've got the Sword Impulse, which has been a very popular kit. I can remember it was Sid's favorite Gundam over on Gaijin Gunpla for a long, long time. I've still 
always meant to build it, but I haven't yet. And this right here looks pretty damn cool. So if you are a fan of the Impulse Gundam, have the Master Grade Force Impulse and Sword Impulse up in your shelf waiting for that third edition, now is your time. Of course, once again, this is out in January 2020, coming in at about 5,500 yen, direct from Premium Bandai. Next, also Premium Bandai, we are getting the Real Grade Crossbone X2. So of course, this is just like the standard Real Grade Crossbone, just in that nice dark navy blue with a lance. What's not to like? Again, no announcement date. These pictures are from Dengeki Hobby and it'll cost around 2,900. And once again, that price would be directly from Premium Bandai. So basically, that is it for this episode. So a lot of awesome releases coming up. I don't know which you guys are the most excited about. Drop them down there in the comments. For me, it's definitely the G40 Gundam as well as that Fats Verka. Both of those, definitely looking forward to. Also, drop your opinion on that G40 Gundam down there. I'd love to see. This is dividing people so much, dividing Gunpla fans so much, that I think it's really interesting, and it's definitely, definitely gonna be one special Gunpla. But anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching. I will mention there is three days left on that real grade new Gundam giveaway, as well as the dual model kit Optimus Prime. The link to the video that has that giveaway in it is down there in the description. Check it out if you want to win. Even if I said it already, thank you so, so much for watching. As always, make sure to come back for more Gunpla news and reviews, and I'll see you next time. And I cannot finish this video right here without thanking each and every one of you guys for watching, as well as to all my supporters over on the channel memberships as well as Patreon, including Craig Jury, NQG420, Tyler Sanders, Bolwick, Vex, Forge Horizons, and Kaiser721.